Hello and welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. Here we are in the woodshed with the Yamaha Bright. We're glad you joined us and you know the cow hands are sitting around the campfire now and they're singing bebop tunes to the werewolves and the vampires and trying to get them to sing in uh, two-part harmony. So that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty fun thing to watch. And I'm going to be playing for you tonight a song that incorporates beginner level jazz piano using block chords in your left hand and, and a melody in your right hand. Just a simple thing, but it's all has to do with beginner level jazz piano. Here we go now with a song called That's All. This is part two or the second step of beginner jazz. So there's going to be a lot of information in here. You might want to either slow down the video using the settings button or also be able to stop and start the video and rewind using the arrows and also the space bar. So if you haven't uh, learned how to do that, you want to might check my video on um, tips for the using my channel. So what we learned in the part one was the basic chords, and I'm going to play them in the right hand with just the bass note. So it's the, the basic chords are block chords. Now block meaning they're like building blocks, really building thirds, root, third, fifth, seventh, but they're all thirds. This is a major third, this is a minor third, this is a major third. So that's it, the building blocks, block chords. Now major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven, flat five, or half diminished, and full diminished, or we call this a C diminished seventh. So now we're going to try to apply these, we're actually going to apply these concepts to playing a song, and the song is going to be That's All. It's in the key of C, and we're going to be using the scale tone sevenths. Now what that means is we're going to be using the chords that we create with the using the C scale, and if we just play them as thirds, they look like this. If we play the scale as chord triads, they look like that. And we can define them. And then if sevenths is what we want for jazz, so we can now use this system, scale tone sevenths. This is the diatonic system for forming the harmonic structure to a tune. So let's look at it. The one chord is C major seven. The two is D minor seven. 3 chord is E minor 7, 4 chord is F major 7, 5 chord is G dominant 7, 6 chord is A minor 7, 7 chord is B half diminished or B minor 7 flat 5. Now you might want to say, well how did you come up with that? How do you know what they're called? Well, because I'm relating to them to this system that we started with in C, major 7, dominant 7, minor 7, half diminished, and full diminished. I'm relating that but in the with the root now being changed. So like when I go to D on the root here now, now I have to define it from the D system, which is D major seven, right? D dominant seven, D minor seven, D minor seven, flat five, and D full diminished. So it's best to just accept what they're called for now, but that's really how it works. So when I go to the two chord now in the key of C, it becomes minor because if I would did this, I would have notes that aren't in the key of C, or not in the scale of C. So I just want to stay with notes that are in the key of C. So that's a D minor. This is an E minor 7. This is an F major 7. This is a G dominant 7th. This is an A minor 7. This is a B half diminished. So those are the chords we're going to use, and we're going to put them into the left hand. Now, continuing, we're going to start to show you how to use those for this specific song. We really want to talk about seventh chords because those are the chords we use in jazz. So C major seven is going to have three inversions now. They're root position, first inversion, right? So we take the bottom note, put it on the top. First inversion has the E or the third on the bottom. Second inversion, we go up one. Now it has the fifth on the bottom. We move the E up here. Now we're going to move the G up for the third inversion. So we have a seventh on the bottom. So root position has the root on the bottom, first inversion has the third on the bottom, second inversion has the fifth, and third inversion has the seventh on the bottom. Let's take a C7. Same type of thing, C, C dominant seventh like that, C minor seven like this, 
minor 7 flat 5 like this and C diminished now same thing as you go up the scale tone sevens like this you want to be able to invert every chord so get the D minor now root position first inversion second inversion third inversion E minor root position first inversion second inversion third inversion now we can also move these notes these chords around chromatically so let's talk about chromatic alteration so we can alter seventh chords by altering their quality like if it's an E minor seven we can alter it to become dominant seventh or major seventh or minor seven flat five or diminished but we can also move it down chromatically move down or up chromatically so we move down quite often you'll see this it'll move down chromatically like that so E minor seven now becomes E flat minor seven then we move it down to D minor seven like that so we can approach the D minor in half steps now we can also go down to an E flat minor and then seventh and then alter that to the major make it a dominant seventh so there's another common type of progression is the three to the flat three but dominant then the two chord and then the flat two but dominant and that's a very common progression let's take a quick look at my book this is the cover it's set up in a three ring binder so it's very practical to use I'm going to show you the chapter and page on chord alterations. This is chapter 10, page 60 in my book, a view of it on seventh chord alterations. You can see that the C major seven can be altered to the, any other type of seventh chord, to a seventh dominant seventh, a minor seventh, a minor seven flat five, or a full diminished seventh. Any other chord in the system of the scale tone sevenths can also be altered. So a D minor seven, which is the two chord, can then be made into a major seventh, or can be altered to a dominant seventh, or a minor seven flat five, or a full diminished seventh. Now, in addition, any scale tone seventh can be either raised a half step or lowered a half step. So a G seven now could be raised to an A flat seven. And then we could change the quality of it and make it A flat minor. So there's many, many possibilities for alteration and also changing the quality of any chord. One other point about my book, you see it comes in, uh, it's designed to fit into a three ring binder. So there's no problem with the pages sitting flat. You don't have to deal with it like you do on a lot of books on the market. This, you, these pages can be taken out to be photocopied very easily so it's very convenient that way so you should understand that block chords are chords that are stacking thirds in other words in a block right that's where they get the name is they're like blocks root third fifth seventh so it's a major third interval there and it's a minor third interval there and it's a major third interval there and it goes like this so these are all block chords and you want to learn those first and you can like you can simplify them with this song if you if you like by just playing the root and the seventh like that and that simplifies and we could start with that and just try to get the coordination between the hands like this So it goes one, two, three, two, one. So now you can add, next step would be add the third. Next step would be add the fifth. So you need to get really acclimated to those chords. And then here's the melody. So that's it. Now I'm just playing the chords in block position using one, three, five, seven. Now you can, like I say, you can simplify it, but not even gonna talk about timing yet. Now it goes to the four chord. Now up to the four chord now, I'm gonna alter it. That's major seven. Remember I said this was, this was major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, so the so the one chord is major seven, the two and the three are minor sevenths, the four chord is major seven, the five chord is dominant seven, 
The sixth chord is minor seven, and the seventh chord is half diminished. Now you have to learn those and memorize those qualities to the chord and see how they fit within their own scale. Without that, you're just uh, living in the fog. You don't understand what's going on. But when I get to the four chord now, because it's major seven, I can make it dominant. I can alter it to make it dominant because I like that sound better, like this. See, I like that sound better than the major seven because it's dominant with a ninth there and it it tends to pull me to the three chord which is the next chord which is an E minor seven particularly with that note in there now I have an F7 with a nine and a sharp 11 in it and I'll explain that later but just accept it for now to the three chord now I go to a six chord now the six chord would be up going up six steps two three four five six and it's minor seven. But now we need to alter it to a dominant seventh, which means you have to raise the third. There it is, a dominant seventh, and then I can invert it. So this is an important thing to learn, is the inversions of chords so that you can create what I call the concept of economy of motion. Rather than being on the three and moving, having to move the hand all the way up here, like a fourth to the A7, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the A7 in inversion by taking it down to an inversion that fits with the E minor 7. So I have E, G, B, D going to E, G, A, C sharp, which is A7, just inverted, you see. So you have a lot of work to do for you. You have to learn not only the block chords in their root position, but in their first inversion, their second inversion, and their third inversion. Now that means, let's just take A for example. There's the sixth step of the, or sixth mode, which is Aeolian, and we're on an A minor seven. So now we need to understand its scale. Now we need to play its major seven, its dominant seven, its minor seven, its half diminished, and its full diminished. And now we are going to see that the A minor seven has to be altered by adding or raising the third because a dominant seventh has a major third, a, a perfect fifth, and a flatted seventh or a minor seventh interval. So there's the A7. Now if we invert it, we take it up one inversion, which means we take the bottom though, put it up on the top like this. Next, that's first inversion. Next inversion would be to take this note and put it up on top. That's second inversion. Then the next one would be to take that note and put it on top. And that would be the third inversion. So we're going to take the A7, you can invert them rising or descending, like, you know, I could take that G and put it down an octave and put it there. I can take that E and put it down an octave and make it there. And that's the one I'm going to use. Or I could take it down another octave, put that C sharp down there. So now there's the inversion I'm going to use because it's what we call economy of motion, E minor 7 to A7 like that. So this move, this voice moves down a whole step, this voice moves down a half step. That's what you want is that economy of motion. Now we're going to continue from there. So next I'm going to show you one of the most important block chord types of chord progressions you need to learn and that is to take a two chord, in other words in the key of C this would be the two chord and move it to its related five using the concept of economy of motion. In other words, moving least amount of, if, if we go up to the five chord, it's be a skip like that, but professional piano playing and jazz piano involves using inversions of a chord. So we're gonna use D minor seven in its root and we go to G seven like this. Now, what is that? Now that's of a G seven, it's the fifth here the seventh, minor seventh, or flat seven there, the root, and the third like that. In other words, it's not, it's an inversion of the chord. The root position would be always one, three, five, seven. Now we're inverting it down to here. We have five, seven, one, three. And what that does is create economy of motion from the D minor seven moving down this, this note down a whole step and this mo moving down a half step. So that's the most important 2-5 type of 
type of progression in the left hand block chord version you should learn. The two chord, we're in C, so the two chord is D minor 7, moving to G7, inverted in its second inversion. How do we know that's the second inversion? Well, let's just take the root position. We can see the second inversion has the fifths again. Root position has the root on the bottom. First inversion has the third on the bottom. Second inversion has the fifth on the bottom. And third inversion has the seventh. And that's the rule for all inversions. So like, so now we go from D minor seven in root position to G seven in second inversion, which leads us now comfortable voice leading to the one chord in root position. So this moves down a half step and this from there we go down a half step here and we go down and that's all we need to do is go down and move this one down a whole step. So here's the one, three, five, seven, G seven, five, seven, root, third, down to C major seven, root, third, fifth, seven. Now this is paramount that you learn this these progression you should learn them in every key you know that's it this is it in C so let's learn it in F there it is in F right now let's learn it in G right now you want to learn these in all the keys you know let's go to E flat that's the first type of voice leading movement you should learn to voice chords properly in your left hand in block chord positions okay Okay, so that's enough information to work on for the next few weeks for you, but I'm going to continue and show you how I'm using these concepts regarding block chords in the, in the left hand and melody in the right hand through this song. And so it goes like this. There's the one chord, or C major 7. There's the two chord, or D minor 7. There's the three chord, or E minor 7. And I'm just going to put the two chord back there again, the D minor 7. Now to go to F major 7, but now I'm going to alter it. So I'm going to make it dominant. Like that. There's the E minor 7. Now here's the A7 inverted. Then I go to this. Now that chord I have to explain because really it's like taking an F major 7 and raising the root. So now it becomes defined by the root, so it's an F sharp chord. But what is it? Well, it's an F sharp half diminished, or a F sharp minor seven flat five. Well, how do we know that? Well, you have to play the scale of the F sharp. And you can see that there's, there's the triad, there's the major seven, there's the dominant seventh, there's the minor seventh, and there's the minor seven flat five. Well, let's look at that again. There's the basic triad, one, three, five. That's based on the scale of F sharp, or G flat, however you wanna look at it. So one, two, three, four, five. There's, there's the triad, S six, seven. So there's, there's the triad. Here's the major seventh. Here's the dominant seventh. Lower the third, here's the minor seventh. Lower the fifth, there's the half diminished. So that's an F sharp half diminished. So it's like an F major seven, but with the root raised like that. So let's go through it again. There's our chord. Now, goes to an F minor 6. Now how do I know that's an F minor 6? And you know if you're wondering well, how I came up with the chord, well it's a, it's on the chart. It's on that's how the composer wrote it. So that that chord is an F minor 6. Now we know that this is an F major 7, right? 1 2 3 4 F major 7. So if we lower the 7th to a 6, 1 2 3 4 5 6, right? And then we lower the 3rd to a flat third it makes it an F minor 6 so like F minor 6 let's go that again 
Now here you have, you would want to go to the three chord, but it's a conflict with the melody. So whenever that happens, you have to adjust the chord. So it's, so I'm going to make it that. Now what that is is a C chord, but with an E in the bass, which is not an E minor seven because it'd have to be an E minor seven with a sharp, which you could do with, but it ends up being a C chord inverted to the first inversion. Now there's an interesting chord. Now what is that chord? Well, it's, we always define it from its root. So it's an E flat chord, but it's a diminished seventh. Now, how do I know that? Because if I just played an E flat scale, and then I played root third, fifth, seventh, and then made it major seventh, and made it dominant seventh, and made it minor seven flat five, minor seventh, and then minor seven flat five, and then diminished. I, so I have to do that process of you know, triad, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, minor seven flat five, diminished seventh. So the major seventh, major seventh, dominant seventh, double flatted seventh or six. That's the diminished. Now let's let's look at it again. see how that fits the melody because it's descending down the scale but it could have been a minor six pretty close but but we're going to an A there so that really helps or supports that diminished chord like that now to the two chord Now it ends up on a five chord because now that's going to set up the next eight bars which are going to be going back to the one chord. So it doesn't resolve there. It stays on the what we call the uh, dominant cadence which would be G7. So now we'll continue. The second A is very similar to the first A except that it ends on a one chord instead of a five. So from here it's... on a C6 chord. Now the bridge goes up, chord moves up to the 5 chord, but then we alter it to minor. So this is dominant, now this is minor 7, and we're introducing that accidental there, so lowering the B to a B flat. So now it's, this is going to be functioning as a 2 chord moving into, into F major. So G minor 7, C7, F major 7, then I can put this diminished chord to lead back to the G minor because it's going to repeat. So it's going to be Melody is built on the 11th of the chord, 8, 9, 10, 11, so that's C. Like that. Now you might be questioning why I've got these so close together and why don't I spread them out. Well, for the block chord position I can, I can invert it or I can move the melody up here. But there's no way you can get around that. I mean, they, if you want that sound in root position with that melody in that position, you're going to have to lift the hand, lift it off. Otherwise, I can move this inversion down. I can move it there if you like it. I'm not wild about that inversion, but moving it down one inversion just means taking that top note down and putting it down the bottom. And then if I want to, I can drop the root there and add the ninth, and I've got a nice Bill Evans sound. Going to there. And there's a nice economy of motion in that third inversion. So that'd be a third inversion of a G minor seven, going to a first inversion of a C nine, and then a third inversion of the F major seven, like that. Then it moves up a whole step on the second half. seven or G9 sus chord and then we're back to the last day so now we'll continue 
Now, supposing you're a beginner and you say, well, that's too much for me to learn all at once. And can you simplify it in any way to make it easier for a beginner? So now I would say the process would be learn the melody of the song in your right hand. Now add the bass note. That's the simplest way. And now, learn the root and the seventh. So it's either going to be a root and a major seventh, or a root and a dominant, dominant seventh. And if it's minor, you don't worry about that for now. We're just going to create two notes. So like two notes would be root and seventh, like this. That's minor seven, but it's two notes. That's dominant seventh. Minor seventh. Now here we're just going to root and third. There's root and seventh. That's root and six. There's an inversion now, so it's root and six. There's root and six again. Root and seventh. putting in the chord there but you can see how you can simplify it now like it's going to still sound good I'm going to give a little rhythm Okay, that wraps it up. And signing off, I want to say it's a beret time, so it's November, and we wish you happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. And thanks for joining me. Please write to me, ask me questions, comments. I love to hear from you, and I will always try to answer. Give me some time to answer because I get a lot of a lot of letters from people. But in the meantime, let's just say we want to tell you to swing loose, and we'll see you around the block. Take care. Bye-bye.